Yeah, just like that, it's time for Massacre Radio. I, of course, am your host, Members Only Dave, and we're ringing the dinner bell, and it's feeding time. Actually, you might want to get a little pregame stretch going, bust out the nunchucks, do a couple of roundhouse kicks, because today, it's all about ninjas. Yep, that's right. Coming up here a little bit later on, I'll be speaking with Jennifer Murphy. She might not be a ninja expert, but she did write a song and has a viral video of her performance. We invited her into our dojo, and she kindly accepted. So sharpen up your ninja stars and boil some water. Let's get to it. Come on. This is Master Radio. He's loud. I can shut you down if I want to. I can raise my voice. I can do that. He's opinionated. Look, bottom line is Sally Field was at her hottest in Homeward Bound 2. This is a fact. And he's the number one radio personality in the universe. Members only, Dave, on Massacre Radio. Right here on WKMA Cleveland. An HD2 station. Massacre. You're listening to Massacre Radio, and joining me now on the hotline, which you too can call at 440-941-8585. You know her from her viral video performance of an original song she made titled, I Want to Be Ninja. Let's have a listen. I want to be ninja. That's the one. Today I'm joined by none other than Jennifer Murphy. Jennifer, thanks for taking time to join us on Massacre Radio today. How's everything going? I'm great, David. How are you? Good, good. So I mentioned the viral video, which you ended up posting to your YouTube channel, where you have a bunch of other videos, from videos of you skateboarding in high heels outside of a Del Taco to parasailing with a Barbie Jeep. Just talk a little bit about how you got your start with producing comedic videos on your channel. I mean, how did it all come about? Sure. I love that you dug up a couple of my classics from years ago. I've been making YouTube videos since about 2009. I started Go Girl Worldwide in 2008, a multimedia organization to empower girls and women. And I thought, well, how do I promote this in a fun way with very little budget right now for my startup? And YouTube was new at the time. And I started watching people like Ryan Higa on YouTube, who was just hilarious. And I thought, what if I make funny videos on YouTube that promote my company? And at the time, I had moved to Greenwood, Indiana, which is like out in Timbuktu. And I'm from Oregon and California. Uh, and I thought, what am I going to do here? And I went to the Goodwill and I saw a kid's Barbie Jeep. And I thought, what if I drive that and break the law in the Barbie Jeep and punk people and I'll, you know, film with my little flip camera and my laptop. And, and so I started doing that and I just had so much fun with it. And that started it. Hey, shout out to Greenwood, Indiana, and all the homies in the Hoosier State. So I know you're also a comedian. Do you have a background in comedy as far as like stand up or improv or anything like that is concerned? Well, I've always, ever since I was little, I'm second to the oldest of 12 kids. We just always have been goofballs. So entertaining each other at home, uh, I just became a natural with trying to make people laugh. Years later, uh, I I was in the corporate world for a while, you know, doing business. And my goal was to, you know, be a successful businesswoman. But deep down, I wanted to be an actress. And I finally, after I I was on The Apprentice with Trump, and after he fired me, he said, I still want to hire you. And I said, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks. It's time for me to become an actress. So I moved to LA, switched gears, and dove into acting classes. And my teachers would say, Jen, you need to focus on comedy. You're actually really good at it. You're funny and people don't expect it coming from you. And I said, well, I want to be sexy. I want to be dramatic. And they said, ha ha, <laughs> start with the comedy. You can always branch out later. And so that did stick with me. And there's something about making people laugh. that just really feels good because people are so serious these days or, you know, we all go through tough times. So yeah, and then once I started making my funny YouTube videos, I had so much fun not only filming them, but then editing them because so much of the magic happens in the editing and there's a lot to the timing of things. So I really started enjoying that and I was kind of self-taught and I learned on iMovie. Over time, I realized that my funny videos, I would sprinkle in positive messages in them and I thought, you know, 
maybe this is what I should be focusing more time on. Maybe instead of so many seminars and educational things, I educate through the, the humor and the fun. Jennifer Murphy is my guest today. So let's dive into this video. I want to be a ninja. I want to know about the occasion, you know, the reason why everyone was gathered there in the first place. What kind of party or gathering was it where you had your performance? Yeah, a Murphy bed party, it says here. That does have something to do with it. So it, it seems so like random and out of left field and people are like, what in the world is going on here? Is this a scene from the office or is this real life? <laughs> At the time, I had um, I was still looking for ways to fund Go Girl Worldwide and you know, it takes money to build a, a company and a brand. And I had always wanted to do Jennifer Murphy beds. So I love Murphy beds. Being one of 12 kids, they're space saving. I think they're smart and they're cool. And I met these Murphy bed manufacturers and they had several stores. And I said, you're called wall beds and more. That's kind of blah. What if I become your spokesperson and I'll do all of the marketing and, you know, and I can help promote the beds online and the stores and we'll do a deal and then the funding will help me build my, my my dream so at the same time i was hired by a company to make a commercial to help launch them i started having companies ask me to make commercials they're like we love your videos you get tons of views so i started upping my game and um you know started having different video clients so i started creating this video for them they wanted a villain I thought, well, my friend Peter, he looks like Mr. Chow off The Hangover, and he <laughs> wants to be in one of my videos. What if I create a, a role for him, and then he's trying to take down Go Girl? I'm the superhero to spread, the, you know, save the day, spread smiles. So I start writing this. We start doing a little filming, but then the company went a different direction. Said, we're just going to go B two B. We don't need a video for consumers. And I thought, oh, darn it. I like this concept. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I'll make it into a song and a music video. I'll make the first line of the song. I shut my Murphy bed and I'll roll out of bed and it'll help promote my Murphy bed business that I'm getting ready to launch. So it was just like all of these dynamics going on at the same time. And then I asked my Murphy bed partners, I said, let's do a big blowout pink carpet party. That's what I do for, you know, all my events for Go Girl. Let's do a pink carpet Jennifer Murphy Bed's launch party, all of my all of my friends, and I'll even perform my new upcoming song I wrote, I Want to Be Ninja. So that night, um, everybody starts showing up, and I had at least six or seven Asian friends that were there. I don't typically count how many of which <laughs> nationality, but, you know, people are like, she only had one Asian there. I had quite a few, but they all happened to be on the other side of the the room. And so it was just a case of Murphy's Law times 10. My friend Cynthia brings her friend, her neighbor, who's like really new from China. Somehow she ends up positioned like right where I'm singing. And Fiona is her name. Mm -hmm. And she hadn't, she didn't know English at the time, very, very little. And she was shy, feeling out of place. I remember thinking, oh, that's kind of funny. Like she's there and I, you know, the, the Chinese girls, I, oh, well, <laughs> oh, boy, how do I, I want to make sure she feels included here, but this is a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the recording process of the song. You had a concept, but I guess both lyrically and musically, how did it all come together for you? I'm in the studio, we're, you know, collaborating. I, I wrote the lyrics, but we needed that chorus, that, you know, that catchy riff. We go outside and me and, you know, my producer and a few musicians, my sister, and they're passing around a, a joint, which <laughs> even though I'm from Oregon originally and it's legal there, I don't smoke very often. <laughs> so for me, it's just all of a sudden, like, I'm like I want to chop, <laughs> chop, chop, chow down, take chow down to Chinatown. I want to be ninja. And they look at me and they're like, that's it. <laughs> That's it. How'd you come up with it? I go, maybe it's what you just gave me. I don't know. And so um, that's kind of what happened there. How old is that song and video that went viral? It's a couple of years old at this point. Yeah. Like what, seven? It was 2016, I believe. So okay. yeah, about that. Okay. So back then the political climate isn't what it is today in 2024. So talk a little bit about how the video and song was received back then and some of the backlash that you got stemming from it. At the time I was anxious to see what my, my YouTube followers thought of the song. I was excited about the song. I thought, well, let me just put it out there. 
kind of test the waters, which I did. And then um, a couple <laughs> months go by and we're selling Murphy beds like hotcakes. I mean, I get to go to the office and review the numbers with my two partners and I'm making amazing commission checks. And I'm just thinking, finally, I found a way to really make some serious money uh, without just going back to corporate America full time. And, you know, and this way I can just do everything I want to do. And so it was like my everything was finally happening all my work, hard work paying off. And then one day um, the phones start ringing, my emails blow up and I get called into the office and the guys are like, what have you done? <laughs> We're getting threat. People want to come burn the store down. And so I look online, I'm Googling, and I see that a guy named Angry Asian Man on Reddit had created a, a headline and an article basically calling me a racist Asian hater, you know, kind of white privileged. And it just created this spiral. And so many people just blindly jumped on the bandwagon and just attacked me. And, um, and it really, it blew it up, you know, big time. And but I said, guys, there's got to be silver lining here. I mean, it's hard to pay to even get this many views. And what if one out of 100 haters want to buy a Murphy bed? Let's can we ride the wave out? And they said, no, you need to write an apology letter right now, which they pretty much wrote for me and said, you need to sign this. Otherwise, we're done with you. And then wow. they said, um, you need to also make a promise that you'll never make a funny video again. You're, you're our Kathy Ireland. You're going to make a lot of money. And I said, you know what? I'm not Kathy Ireland. I'm Jennifer Murphy. I'm Go Girl. And that's part of who I am. And I'm sorry, I cannot make that promise. And they said, then we're done. Okay, so with that being eight or so years since that video has surfaced, has the reception remained the same or have you found maybe these days more than in the past people have a problem with it or maybe give you a harder time about it compared to then? That's a great question. I would say for the most part, the hater has made it wildly famous. It has over a billion views on TikTok. Um, memes have been done all over the world and kids of all ages and all races all over the world sing my song and most people love it. I get 1,000 to 5,000 views every hour on my YouTube and tons of comments every hour. And I would say by far the, the comments are positive. There's so many cute ones like, as an Asian, I'm offended that this isn't my ringtone yet. <laughs> uh, most of it's positive now. I don't mind a little bit of the controversy because then it keeps people talking about it and keeps the buzz going. Mm -hmm. And then it opens the door to have conversations about what is the difference between hate speech and freedom of speech, you know, comedy that's healthy and fun versus hateful comedy that shouldn't happen. We're going to take a brief pause here and be back with more from my guest today, Jennifer Murphy, after this. Ah, man, I'm never going to learn these moves. There's got to be an easier way to be a ninja. Hey, you can't be in here. This is a close set. I hear you would like to know a secret to being ninja. Beat it, Shang Tsung. I'm almost at the end of my session, and you're eating into valuable time. I will teach you, but it's an ancient Chinese secret. You mustn't tell a soul. You're still here? All right. It's looking to me like I'm going to have to Wang Chung all over your... Hey, come here. Stop. What are you doing with that radio? All you must listen with open ears Earth, and an open mind, not, not a running mouth. The majority of it lives underground. The majority hmm. of Earth's Suddenly the moves just the come to me, and I'm at total peace. Say, what's the name of that show anyway? Massacre Radio. Massacre Radio. Ancient Chinese secret, huh? Earth or off Earth are most likely living in remote little geological areas and using Earth as a base of operations. Or this is We're back here on Massacre Radio, and if you're just now joining us, my guest today is Jennifer Murphy. We've been discussing her viral video, I Want to Be Ninja. Jennifer, one of the things I like most about the video is just how dedicated you are to the performance. I mean, you just go all in the entire time. At any point while you were performing, did you feel like maybe people weren't into it the way you wanted? Oh, I was all in. There was no there was a point of no return. <laughs> um, so yeah, I you know I did see a couple faces in the audience where they're thinking, "What's going on?" But that's also part of the joke, I guess. Yeah, I, there was nothing that was going to keep me from finishing it with just all in. That's kind of my personality. I'm a 
bit of a risk taker, but no, absolutely. Yeah. It's my understanding that the whole I want to be a ninja thing became so popular that you made your own video game. Is that still available? And talk a little bit about how that even got off the ground. Was it as easy as just asking someone to make one for you or what? Well, um, I, it is still available. And I, I realized how famous my song was in the gaming world. And my biggest fans happen to be boys ages like 14 through 35 or so. And I thought, let me make a game, even if it's a cute, simple, fun game. So I hired someone um, and paid him a little bit of money. And I thought, let me just test the water with the game. And then not long after that is when Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino reacted to my song and were kind of, you know, poking fun at me. And Mm -hmm. I said, well, why don't you have me on your show and I can give you the real story. Well, I wanted to ask you about that appearance and how it went. It seems to me like they were out to get you from the jump, no matter your explanation, you know? They were a bit of hypocrites, let's just say, because they said, I can't do comedy like that because I can't do, I, you can't do the accent. You're not a real comedian, Jen. I think they were kind of trying to protect themselves. Everybody was getting canceled at the time. <laughs> so they probably thought, let's cancel her and then that'll make us look good. and Maybe we won't get canceled. Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey, guys, that was not very nice. They even hung up on me at the end of the interview, which I know you're not going to do, David. No, you're nice. <laughs> I am not going to do that. No, no. <laughs> so I thought they hung up on me and they tried. And then I watched how they edited everything. And I thought, that's not fair. And so I then uh, made a, a, another video game called Bad Friends. And I took their image and likeness, and I make them the little guys, and then they just wipe out every time, and GoGirl always wins in the video. So it's actually a uh, video game you can play on Google Play, and I don't know what they thought about my little, you know, payback with that. But I do hope to do actual, real, like, robust um, video games, you know, maybe a licensing deal with a video game company or Mm -hmm. some kind of a, you know, create that, that branch of my business eventually. Bad job out of those guys, huh? Now, Jennifer, I know you kind of touched on it in the beginning of our talk, how the whole I want to be a ninja video opened the door for endorsement opportunities. But did you ever get any because of it? I mean, I saw the Ding Sticks commercial you did, but were there others? Um, well, let's say it's been one thing that's kept me from having some opportunities. Even after I launched my magazine and started getting some clients, uh, you know, branding, marketing, video clients again, I would have clients for a time. And then someone on their board would say, wait, no, that's the ninja girl. Be careful. And so it was hard to experience that. And I thought, okay, how do I outsmart this woke cancel culture? And I thought, you know, I now have so much traction on this. I'm going to now triple down. I'm going to come out with a movie. I want to be Ninja the movie. Jennifer Murphy is my guest today. A few more questions before we wrap this up. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about this whole I want to be a Ninja movie I keep hearing about and when you got funded. I got funded. Last year, I filmed the majority of my first feature film, which has always been a dream to direct and produce a feature. So it's going to be hilarious. It'll weave in a little bit of my own true story. And it also educate people about the history of ninjas, how they actually did originate in China. So somehow I was right all along, even though I just did it because it rhymed. Uh, And we'll be finishing the movie pretty soon here. And I'm really excited about it. So again, it's like there's silver lining if you look. And if I had gotten so busy with new clients, I wouldn't have had time to come up with the idea to do a movie, to make the movie happen. And now that's been 100% of my whole focus. So I'm really, really excited about it. And I just, I hope it inspires anybody out there to go for your dreams and never give up. And whether it's your own self-doubt or somebody mean in your life or people attacking you and bullying you, just know you can get through it and go with the flow, but buckle down and, and, you know, make it happen. Is there by chance any promo posters or VIP packs still floating around by chance? I mean, I saw the promo poster and I would just love to have one hanging up here in the studio, you know? Yes, I do have my movie posters <laughs> available to buy on my website. If you go to I want to be ninja.com and I'll be adding a several different renditions of it. I still haven't decided which poster to make like the official one. Mm -hmm. Um, I also have another poster of me on it that I'll autograph for people and a comic book. It's kind of like a collector's VIP. 
fan pack. I even have a cute Go Girl sticker that comes with that. So I've been autographing those and, and shipping those to fans and supporters that buy that on my website. Any sales from that is helping me with this final push to get the rest of the movie completed and out. Jennifer, can people expect any new original songs from you for the film? Well, there are a couple new original songs that I created that'll be sprinkled in. Um, but I also, even though it's a lower budget, I think I did a lot with the budget, but I did invest in the music in a big way. I decided to hire an award-winning composer. They're calling him the next John Williams. He is so talented. His name is George Toom. George with an S at the end and then Toom, T-O-M-B. Mm-hmm. He's in Monaco and he normally he would be like way, you know, super expensive. He did me a kind of a friends and family, <laughs> you know, deal, but it was still a big piece of my budget. But it, we have a 65 person orchestra in Budapest wow. and most of the music has been recorded it's so beautiful and epic and it's fun because you see these colorful you know comedic scenes and then you have this big music and it's kind of like reminds me of some of those looney tune things where bugs bunny and elmer furt are doing opera and elmer Fudd, you know and so uh yeah i think the music itself will be a full experience Jennifer Murphy has been my guest today on Massacre Radio. So tell us again where people can find you and where to check out the movie. You can go to IWantToBeNinja.com. Um, you can spell it either N-E-E-N-J-A or N-I-N-J-A dot uh, com. And you can pre-buy the movie for nine ninety nine, and then it'll be sent to you when it comes out or any other merch there. You can also find my website, jennifermurphy.com. You can send me an email if you have any ideas. You know, I love suggestions. And yeah, those are my two. And then if you want to, you know, for any of your um, ladies uh, that are listening, Go Girl Magazine is available for free at gogirlmgz.com. We have hundreds of articles there, a lot of inspiration and some fun stuff. And we love featuring our great Go Guys, too, because I've never been a man-hating organization. We don't need to put men down in order to uplift women, which is something that I think you'll also see in my movie, which I think is important right now. Go check that out. There's so much to look forward to. Jennifer Murphy, thank you again for taking the time to speak with us on Massacre Radio. Good luck with the movie and all the best to you in the new year. Thank you so much, David. So happy to be on here. Massacre. Thanks again to my guest today, Jennifer Murphy, and thanks to you for listening. Hey, before we get out of here, we finally got a message on our Massacre Radio hotline, which you too can call at 440-941-8585 from our man Psychonaut. And they said a lot of really nice things about both the label and the show, but I figured instead of playing the full message or even parts of it, why not turn it into a little something? So here it is to take us out. As always, I've been your host, Members Only Dave, on this, the 27th installment of Massacre Radio, and I'll talk at you next week. Yo, what is up, Massacre Radio? Figured I love stuff working to release all over Massacre Radio. Direct impact. Hell yeah. Massacre Radio. Oh, yeah. WK.